What's good YouTube? Welcome to another small James coding tutorial where today we're going to be going through a bit of a boot camp on Git. This is basically going to be the workplace survival training. And if you're unfamiliar, Git is essentially a version control management system for code that allows multiple engineers to work on the same body of code without it turning into a diabolical mess. And that's pretty much it. That's all you need to know to dive into this tutorial. For some background, I'm a software engineer and I basically, when I got my first job, had to pick up Git in like the first three days. And I've been using it ever since. And this is essentially what I deem to be the most practical commands that you'll probably need to call yourself a pro and never have an issue with it. So to start off, we have a bit of a workflow that kind of describes how Git works in a workplace. And it all begins with a cloud repository, which is where your company will likely have hosted or saved their code to. Common examples are GitLab and GitHub. And so essentially you'll create an account and it will be, you know, connected with your organization and you'll have access to different repositories which contain the code. And so the first command that we're going to learn is git clone. And git clone, essentially what you do, we'll find out later, is it pulls the cloud repository all the code in the cloud down onto your local branch and then you can start working on it and all that good stuff and when it comes down onto your device you will be in what is known as the master or the main branch and that branch can kind of just be thought of as like the source of all truth and like the one true timeline of the code and so from here you're in the working code it's generally not best practice just to go ahead and dive into the main branch and start making changes to the main branch the first thing you want to do is use the git checkout term and git checkout basically allows you to branch off the main branch into your own branch that you can do anything that you want with if you destroy it if you kill it it doesn't break the master branch which is probably the production code and it will just save you from getting into lots of trouble so now you get checkout and you give a name for that particular branch and that is all represented by this like cyan color and so now that you're in your new branch, the sky is the limit as to what kind of code you want to change. You can do absolutely whatever you want, and you can feel reassured that you will not break the master branch. <laughs> Once you've made a whole lot of changes, what you do to preserve them is you use the term git commit. And so a commit message basically saves all of the changes to the individual files, or perhaps you've added files. All of that gets preserved into that particular commit, and that particular version just gets saved. And so once you've committed it, you might have multiple commit messages. Often people will like commit by segments of work or maybe like, you know, they work for 20 minutes, they have a break, they commit all their stuff. So it's all saved. It's the equivalent of just saving and having a version management. So that's why you can have multiple commit messages. And then at the end, what you do is you push your branch. So up to the final commit. So you wanna commit all of your changes and then you push it to the main branch and often what will happen is if you're working in a company that will be in the form of a pull request so you make a pr and if that code is approved then that push request is successful and that code is successfully merged into the master branch and now the master branch will be updated to include the changes you made on your branch now over here we see that we have other people's branches and so what can happen is that if three people are working on the same part of the code at the same time there is the potential for what they call a merge conflict to occur or a conflict in the code. And so if everyone were just to push all of their changes at the same time, you can easily end up in a situation where you get errors or issues because someone might have deleted a section that was essential to your section. And so you have problems. And so what often has to happen is if there have been other commits to the main branch, so other people's push requests have been approved and merged, you have to do what's called a git pull and git merge. And what that means is that you pull the current status of the master branch and then you merge it into your branch. And the way that this should happen very specifically is you want to commit all of your stuff that you've changed, hop over to the master branch. We'll see how you can do that soon. Pull the master branch. So that says basically go to the cloud. It's equivalent to git clone, except it's not restarting the whole repository. You just pull the latest version of it. So you pull whatever is updated in this master branch down to your branch, down to your local device. And then you check out your branch again, enter into your branch up to this point, And then you merge in the master branch. So basically you take all of the master code, you merge it into your branch. 
and then you resolve any merge conflicts before you push it back into the master branch. Once you've resolved any merge conflicts and all the code is still working, you commit any changes that you had to make and you once again push your code in the form of a push request back to the master branch. And that's basically the entire Git workflow. Often a branch is specific to a particular hotfix or a feature and they can be of any size, but it's just a really good way of keeping your task nice and concise and making sure that the production code is never broken. So the first command that we kind of talked about, which was pulling the cloud repository down to our local device was git clone. And so clone, this is the actual line that you would type into your terminal after you've configured git on your local device to authenticate with your repository or your cloud authentication. And so basically you just type git clone. And if you go into the code in the cloud, you can often get an HTTPS link to the name of that repository. And if you click enter, that will pull it down onto your device into the folder, the current directory that you're in, in your terminal. After that, there's a couple of extra git commands that you can run. One is git status. That will just show you the current branch in addition to any changes that may have been made to that particular branch or any files that have been added. And another one is git branch and typing just git branch will show you all the current branches that the production code or this repository has active you know it might be ones that your colleagues are working on however that is and often it's a good thing just to pull the origin so by typing git pull origin while you're in the master branch will pull down the latest master branch and that will give you access to anyone else's branches and they will consequently be available when you type in git branch so let's say we know what branch we're going to use or make now we're going to want to check out that branch and so there's two ways we can do it if we've typed git branch and it's a already existing branch that perhaps we or someone else has made we use git checkout and just type in that particular branch name and that's going to take us off the master branch and into the our own branch or the branch that was already existing and this is the one where we can just go and destroy all the code do whatever we want to it and not worry about breaking production code equally if we're looking to start a new task and make a new branch what we do is we add the dash b flag and that just tells git to initialize a new branch and you give it a new branch name whatever that would, may be and it's best if you make these unique so you know you can try to be a bit creative with it and that will swap you into this new branch and if you once again typed git status it should say that your status is no longer the master branch but it will be in this new branch that you have checked out Kind of like a library book, you check out a library book while you read it or while you work on your code. Now we've made some changes to our code. What we're going to want to do is commit our changes to our branch, preserve them. And we can do that by typing git commit and use a dash am flag with no spaces. And that just says to add all the files and leave a message associated with that particular commit. So after the dash am flag, we can type our message and this is the message that will just describe, you know, often or the best practice for the message is to describe what you have done in this particular commit. So maybe you've added an auth feature or you have added a button or whatever that might look like. And the other thing that you can do is use git add and git add space period. Typing this will also add all of the files that you have, you know, recently created in your specific branch to the status and ready for committing. So you might often end up in a situation where if you've created a file, the Git branch hasn't yet added it kind of to your whole workflow. And so what you'll do is you'll type git add space dot that will add any new files that you've added to this working directory and then you can commit them and now they will be part of your, your whole branch. Saved and preserved. Now let's say you make a whole lot of commits and in your last one you've just totally broken everything and it's too hard to go back and change anything. Another great command to know is git reset and git reset literally typing in git reset dash dash hard and then capitalized head is just going to take you back to your most recent commit. And so that can just be a good way to like jump back a step be like okay I'm just going to do this from scratch again. You're not doing the whole branch from scratch it's literally just from your most recent commit message. And then once we've committed everything, we can push. And so, you know, this is just how I would push code to production. I would type git push dash dash force. So that's a flag that's saying force this push action to happen. And I'm pushing it to origin. 
and then we type in the branch name specifically that we want to push. And from here, what will happen is that if you go into your cloud repository, you'll see this latest branch that you have made be pushed to the cloud and it will give you the option to create a, a PR, which is a pull or push request. And basically from there, what you can do is create that request, which will essentially just give anyone more senior an opportunity to code review you, leave any comments you can, you know, adjust for their comments, and then they can merge that PR into the main code. So git push is kind of just saying, take all of my local commits from my computer and push them into the cloud environment for my particular branch. Now we have git pull. So git pull is a great command to know if you ever just want to pull down the latest version of master. Often the best practice for this is to swap into the master branch from your current branch, pull the origin so that your master branch is always up to date, and then hop back into the branch that you were working in and from there you can merge the master branch and then your current branch will also be updated to the last latest master. But yeah, it's just really ideal if you swap into the master branch before pulling the origin or the whole repository. You can also pull branches specifically, but often just pulling the whole repository and your master branch will make sure that you have access to any newly created branches. Now we have git merge and so in this particular example if we were to run git merge master and we were in the branch that we were using to work on the code so let's say we're adding a new feature we're in that separate branch off the master if we've just pulled the master or pulled from origin our master code might be a couple of versions ahead of our branched code which means that it might have some new changes that other people have been working on we can incorporate them into our branch by typing git merge master while being in our current branch and that will push all of the code across and if you're in Visual Studio code it will give you an opportunity to resolve any code conflicts that you may have and so you can iron out any you know confusion points or any code that may have been removed or added that doesn't really merge with your code and then after that you can commit that and now your current code will also be up to date with the master branch and the repository on the cloud. And just like that, we've covered just about everything you need to know to integrate into most work environments. There are a lot more commands that you can go and check out, but these are the essential ones that, you know, basically I use on a day to day or week by week basis, and it's not really much else. So there where I'd recommend you get started and then it's a great thing that you can add to your CV and just say that you feel comfortable working with. If any of them confuse you, I'd recommend just going back, pausing at that point, listening to that section once more and you should be good to go. Best of luck. If you've enjoyed the video, please like and sub. Super appreciate it. Let me know what you'd like to see next and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.